falling away of the church must come first for the man of sin to be revealed. And this is what we see. The apostasy in the church is a key element to the rise of the Antichrist. The apostasy is symbolized by spiritual adultery. God clearly warns us at Sinai that you shall not commit adultery or have any other gods before me. This is one of the interpretations of the abomination standing in the holy place. The church being the true temple of God, setting up an idol and worshipping a foreign god. The two sides of the false gospel. And this is a big part of the apostasy that's creeping into the church. On the one hand, you've got legalism, which is all about what I can achieve. And on the other hand, you've got indulgence, which is all about what I can indulge in. If the gospel we believe is grounded on this self-elevation, then it is a false gospel. Because the only true gospel, the only true gospel that has been here through the ages is not grounded on self. It is founded on Jesus Christ to be reconciled to God and saved from his wrath through Jesus' death and resurrection. Anything less than Christ alone is a false gospel on his finished work. And the love of God becomes the center of our lives, not the love of ourselves, not the love of our achievement, not the love of our indulgences in the flesh and experiences and signs and wonders, what we can get out of it as some kind of vending machine. That is not who we're, what, the way we're coming. We fear the Lord and we want to make him uh, number one in our lives because we love him and because he set us free by his grace. So this false gospel is antichrist, it is inverted, it does undermine the true power of the gospel itself and it follows the patterns of this world. And we are seeing these many, many false doctrines sabotaging true Christianity. So as we walk through what we're seeing in this day and age, we're really faced with only two options. What is the spirit of truth and the spirit of error? Now the signs of the spirit of truth, as Jesus says when we follow him, we are to love God and love one another. In loving God, we, we seek to give him glory. Uh, we seek his will first. We seek his ways. We abide in the doctrine of Christ. We abide in Jesus, in the true vine. And we also, by extension, seek to love each other. We want to, we, we have these new desires by the spirit that now dwells within us, just as Jesus said. And of course, on the opposite side, the spirit of error will undermine God. It will not seek his ways. It will look for, to make its own way. And it will love itself above others. So this is why we need discernment between what is the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. These are terms that John uses in the book of 1 John, which I thoroughly recommend you to read sometime, because he also touches upon what are the ways that we can determine and discern the deceptions of this last hour. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. He says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, one, the lust of the eyes, two, and the pride of life, three, is not of the Father, but is of the world and the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And then 
what are the chances in the, the verses directly following that, if you read, he then goes in to describe the Antichrist that is coming and the many Antichrists that have arisen. So isn't it interesting that those three points, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, are listed as not of the Father but of the world. So this is one way that we can see what is truly of the doctrine of Christ and what isn't. Now I think you'll be aware that false doctrines that are around today could quite easily fit into those three points. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. This self-centered gospel, this false gospel, which is the promotion of self, not the denial of self. So those three key points there, you can apply to many popular teachers today in the so-called Christian circles that uh, you know, are basically teaching doctrines that are founded on these principles. So we can see automatically that this is, this is false teaching, this is a false gospel. And John warns about these things, that these things are of the world. This is not the gospel of heaven. There's only two options with all of these things. It's very, very simple. There are two different kingdoms. There's the kingdom of true light, and there's the kingdom of darkness. There's the kingdom of truth, and there's the kingdom of error. There's the kingdom of God, and there's the kingdom of Satan. Spiritual light and darkness is, it always has been about this. The biblical term Israel represents the kingdom of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which we as Gentiles are grafted into through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whilst Babylon, on the other hand, is the kingdom of darkness and the devil, and by extension represents figures like Nimrod, Cain and other Antichrist representatives. Of course, the, the Freemasons and the secret societies, they revere people like Nimrod from Babylon. So the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness, we only have two choices. There is no more options than this. There are two choices, heaven and hell. This is what it all comes down to, Christ or Belial. If you want to be included in the kingdom of God, then you must come to God on his terms, through his way, which is believing upon the gift of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, receiving this grace through faith in him, abiding in the doctrine of the gospel. If we claim to believe in Jesus and to desire God, yet we don't want to abide in the gospel. In other words, if we want to turn away and pursue doctrines grounded on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, then we're wandering away into dangerous ground that will result in, in spiritual turmoil. And we're essentially flirting with the whore of Babylon. So if we really want to pursue God, we have to come to him on his terms, the way he has laid out in his word. Otherwise, you're going to be outside of God. You won't have the Father and the Son. If you don't come to God in the way that he tells us in his word, and the way that he's ordained, then uh, you cannot reach God. There is no way to find God outside of these premises. And that's just the truth. You will be in error, you will be in a lie. Gnosticism, mysticism, and all of the other stuff that is rooted on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. If this is the grounding of the gospel that we have believed, then it's a false gospel. It's not rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ and it's not rooted in, in what he laid out, which was to love God first, to love God first. This is the fruit of that faith, of that gospel. It is, the fruit of it is not, um, you know, more and more self-indulgence, seeking signs and wonders, the lust of the eyes. The gospel is to deny ourselves, to come to God for who he is, and to love the brethren. So uh, our worldview must be firmly rooted in the Bible, in who Christ is, not in humanism. That humanism is the, the philosophy of the Antichrist religion.